Welcome to the Innovate and Inspire podcast, where we shine a spotlight on individuals making a profound impact in their communities. Today, we are delighted to have in the studio Curtis Young, a remarkable individual who transitioned from break dancer to mentor to chef and community leader. His journey from sparking a love for break dancing in Huddersfield to hosting workshops internationally and founding the Get Low Pirates showcases his dedication to inspiring the next generation. Balancing a culinary career with a passion for dance, he creates inclusive spaces for youth to thrive. Welcome, Curtis. How you it's great to have you here with us today. It's good to be here. Thank you. Good. Thank you for taking time out for us to just have a conversation with you today. I think I just want to start by, I and mean, I know you're a, you're a local man, you're a Huddersfield boy, <laughs> yeah. born and bred. Yeah, definitely. So just to give our, our viewers just a little background to who you are, you know, uh, yeah, your background. Um, well, to me, my name's Curtis Young. I've just, I've literally, I've been, I've lived in Huddersfield all my life. Um, grew up on Springbank. Then I moved on to, moved to Cowhays in Dalton. And then moved from there to um, to Harpinge, um, which people had known it as being the infamous Pinge um, in that respect. But yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, um, I I really loved I really loved those days back in the days of Pinge when it was like that mm. and the shops were there, to be quite honest with you. Um, had a lot of character. Um, a lot of diff- it's a lot different to how it is now. Mm. Um, but, um, but yeah, but in the situation of that, I've got three brothers. I've got, I've got a brother and a sister. Um, and there's like six years between us all, but yeah, I just kind of, I've always, I've always kind of tried to, trying to find something different to do. And when it kind of came along with like breaking, breaking was just not many people were doing it. And I always aspire to dance, but I didn't like rules. Um, I'm very much like that. I don't really, I know that sounds a bit like, I don't want that sound like on a criminal aspect <laughs> or anything like that. But no, yeah. like, I've always tried to, I don't want to go with the norm in that yeah. respect. And I kind of found with breaking, there were no rules. You could go, you could do, once you've got a foundation, you could do what you wanted. So for me, that was straight up my alley. And I loved that, to be quite honest with you. But I found it pretty late. I didn't find that till I was like 23. But prior to that, I'd probably, <laughs> I'd probably tried so many things. I tried basketball, football in like rollerblading um i tried so many different things because also as well i was one of the oldest out of the people who i was kind of chilling with at those times and i kind of knew as i seen where my life could have gone if i wouldn't have found a vehicle basically in a sense to take me away from kind of certain things that could have happened in that respect so so yeah so break dancing you could say was was a vehicle can you just Give us a little background as to what inspired you to start the journey to breakdancing and how that passion for breakdancing has evolved over the years. Um, it started, if I'm honest with you, I, I did it, um, I was doing it when I was a kid. And when I, I'd, funnily enough, all my, my dad, all my uncles and my auntie have all in some way touched base upon breaking, being it popping or breaking where they learn to do windmills on the floor or something like because back in the day in their day it was at the youth clubs mm. it was heightened everywhere mm. so um there's a wardrobe in my uncle's place basically stating it says on the sticker it says dalton b-boys on it okay. so that alongside seeing these little things when i was a kid and even then now like a lot of it transpires with me now because when i see it i'm like wow okay that's him that's my man that's right i get it it all kind of comes tenfold mm. for me but for me, um, it was, I just wanted to do something that was, just like I said, it was from the norm. When, when I first seen something upside down, when I, when I first seen the world upside down and I'm rotating and, I can, and I'm like, is this what it looks like? I want to, I, yeah, I want to stay here for a bit. Do you know what I mean? So it was like, for me, it was just a, it was an instant passion. Um, it all came along from somebody basically tried to, there's a kitchen I was working in called Tafosa where Turkish Delight is now at the bottom okay. of St. George's Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, a, 
somebody basically tried an arson job on the kitchen, didn't go down well. It just kind of had a little bit of a fire in the kitchen. So I had a refurb for like two weeks. So I got two weeks off paid. But during those two weeks, I don't know if you remember, down at the bottom of town, that's where the sports centre used to be. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I I was, I was liked swimming at that point. Okay. So I went to go swimming. There was a studio called C2. And to this day, I will always put my hand up and thank a guy called Kevin Nurse, um, a guy called Dennis John, even down to Denzel being his dad. Yeah. Um, if those three people for me wouldn't have kind of come into play, I wouldn't be sat here now talking to you. Okay. Because when I went past that studio, it was it was a hip hop enrichment week. And at the last studio, yo, I went to the studio and I heard this beat pumping. I was walking to the end of the studio now and I opened the door. And there's guys doing backspins, but they're traveling across the floor. There's guys doing backflips and stuff like that. And I was looking at this and I was like, yo, what is this? Like, what is this? So then I asked, and there was just this little guy in the corner. And it was, it was a guy called um, Dennis John and his dad at corner now. And I, I, it looked like, a, I'll be honest with you, out of all the atmosphere, it didn't look like someone that would actually do, was leading the session. It looked like someone that was taking part. When he turned around, this small, this small person just turned into this broad, stocky guy. And I was just like, right, big built guy. Mm. Um, and yeah, I just think from that, um, we just, we linked, we just, I don't know what happened. It was like someone that I'd known from my past life and we just became, instantly became friends. He mentored me a lot. And even in life as well, he helped me out a lot. So it was like, from that, I started doing it there during those two, two weeks. I went from being literally a pasta chef there. I demoted myself to a comma where I was doing starters because it was mm. easier for me because I didn't, I, my, my brain was too busy thinking of moves and okay. thinking of all this yeah. stuff that I can do breaking wise and I'm mm. missing orders because I'm too busy doing top rock steps. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. So it, it mm. literally just took over my life. So okay. from that, I kind of knew at that point what my calling was and what I wanted to do. So, I mean, listen to what you're saying. I can, you know, I, I, I can feel the passion for it coming from how you're just describing it. Yeah, you know, your yeah, eyes yeah. are like, you know. But I also hear how important it is to make connections with people oh, yeah. and the influence that other individuals can have on you and and how that has been a real legacy for you oh, yeah, to, no. to, to where you are mm. to, today. Um, I know that the breakdancing is the foundation for where you are today. Mm -hmm. because it's enabled you to travel um i have i have be honest with you i have probably there is i've been to salu when i were a kid mm -hmm. and from that i can probably hands down i can hands down say to you yeah i have not once paid for a flight to go to any other country and i've got stamps all up in my mm. passport and that's mm. all from breaking and for me that's for me that's shown me a lot in a situation that that's something that a passion can take you so far and show you so much of the world Excellent. you know so Excellent. so yeah so definitely the yeah. pa that passion drove me to a lot of places yeah. so it opened up doors for you it's given you opportunities to travel internationally um because you started delivering workshops um so how has you know the international travel uh hosting workshops how's that influenced your approach to your own teaching because you you teach breaking mm -hmm. but you're also a mentor uh, how's that helped to aspire other and inspire other dancers you know your experience of travel and doing these workshops in other countries it's about the also about the way you hold yourself because I feel like I, I can't be out saying to you that drinking this bottle of water is going to actually be really good for your health. Yeah. While I've just put that bottle of water by you and I'm over here drinking a bottle of Coke. Right. You know, I have, to have the, I have to have a certain accountability to what I do um, and to how I approach and to what, and to what I put out there. So it's like, for me, um, it's mainly... Mainly the the one thing I I had a I did a workshop I can remember I, went, I did a workshop I was in Tunisia and 
I walked into the place and I'm walking down the hallway to the actual place of where it was. It was in Seuss. And I'm no word of a lie. I walked, I walked in it. The music's getting louder and louder. And it's getting, I'm like, whoa, what's happening here? I peered through the door, bro, and I'm not going to lie, I crapped myself. There were about 80 people, 60 people, and it was just me. And I was like, right, if I don't, I don't know, if I don't sort this out now and what, how I'm going to challenge this, this whole thing's going to flop. I'm not like, you know, my, my reputation's going to go down a little bit. So for me, in a certain respect, that workshop there showed me in a sense of how I can adapt and I went from, because if you can imagine, if you've got a mass group of people, you've got like possibly like five different kind of levels. Mm. You've got different types of dancers that are in there when it comes to breaking. You've got guys that are into power, like spinning on the head, mm. while some guys like doing footwork and freezers. Mm. So you've got a different aspects to what's going on. So then like I had to basically section it up and figure out, okay, these guys are on power, so you're over there and you would do this, you're over there. And it was literally like one big kind of jam, like a dance jam, you could say, but it was like a, like a workshop for three hours. So I think through that, through that experience from me as well, it kind of showed that, it showed my levels of what I could teach. So you class yourself as an educator. Yes, As definitely. well as a, a, yes. a mentor, but within the dance community. That's right, yes. Yeah. Um, and I know dancing not that i'm a great dancer myself <laughs> you know i have some rhythm but <laughs> but um it takes a lot of dedication commitment but i can also hear coming through how you're expressing especially when you're talking about your backgrounds and stuff that that values like respect dedication perseverance are key components of who you are as an individual. How, how important are those things, those character traits? How important are those in how you educate others? It's basically, you've got to, as, a, as I've seen it as a breaker or, or a b-boy when you get into this, it's reputation. It's not necessarily about winning everything. Mm. It's not about winning everything. Mm. Yeah, it's not. It's not about you know. It's not about winning. It's about taking part. You know, in that respect. Yeah, but I feel like it's still being um rep you representing what who you are, your crew. You mm. know who you are as an individual. So it's like, if you're not prepared to be at that battle, you shouldn't be at that battle. Mm. You know, because you're only going to, you could have won the last three battles, but the next event you go to, and if you get smoked, you know, <laughs> that's what they're going to remember. Yeah, they're not yeah. going to remember the, the yeah. three wins. They're going to remember the last time they've seen you. So it's, it's very much about always trying to elevate your dance and elevate yourself. So you're not mm. kind of always being the same in that respect. So you're on an elevation type mm. of thing all the time with it. And as, again, when it comes to your character. Well, it's been brilliant speaking to you i have one more question before before we finish maybe maybe two okay because i'm interested do you still do you still chefing or is or is your break dancing and your your, your teaching and stuff is that full time uh my so at the minute for me uh chefing wise um if you go back to the thing of not having rules not liking rules mm. um I went back to work at Cedar Court Hotel last year as okay. a chef. I went back to being Junior Sue there, and I don't know, it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't sit well with me because I was doing probably cuisines I didn't like and so forth. So I kind of put that on the back burner. But what actually came of that time and during COVID was um, I've, I've branched out to making cheesecakes. Okay. Uh, so the cheesecakes was basically, uh, they're individual. They're like, you could say they're a bit bespoke. They're not a completely new and unique idea, mm. but I think the closest thing to what I'm doing, you're probably going to find is probably down south somewhere, to be quite honest okay. with you. But um, it's like a cupcake style where like the biscuit is like the cupcake and in the middle is where all your cheesecake filling and whatever it is, mm. um, okay. is that. And they come in an individual basis. Uh, but that's actually, that's been more branched out now to actually coffee shops are actually being more interested in those as a, okay. as a, as a bulk order. 
So I've been doing that and I've also I've also started um well not started but it's been now for about two, three years now. But um CMOS. I've been very in, influenced and interested in CMOS from being from being younger as well, knowing about it, but like not really ever touch base on it. Um my grandma spoke about it to be quite honest with you. Again, but it's like one of those things that just goes over your head. Mm. So I've I've been doing I've been kind of researching a lot more into that. Um the health implications behind it. Um I've been taking it myself now for about a good a good two years. Okay. Um and I've been branching out to kind of making like CMOS sweets, uh sour sop okay. CMOS. Okay. Um so the sweets are like on a it's guava, it's guava, blueberry, uh, mango, and sour sop. And then there's an actual sour sop sea moss. I do purple sea moss and I also do uh, gold sea moss as well. Okay. So on the culinary side, it's kind of more branched out to me kind of kind of making it as a business in that okay. respect. Um as like you could say a little side hustle yeah. in that respect. Well just Again, you know, thank you so much for being with us today. Just to, to end, you want to give a, a little shout out to where people can contact you if they want to get into breakdancing? Yeah, um, basically at the minute, um, a lot, I've got a lot of my websites not under construction at the minute, I will say that. But on the points of being able to contact me, you can get on me by Instagram, um, which is Zesthenics. Um, I'm also coaching up at Empower and Wellbeing. That's up on Bradford Road, which is situated across from Mumbai Spice. It's like big two green railing fences that's just there. Um, so that's Empower and Wellbeing. I'm there Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. And also in that place as well, they've actually got a youth club going on there uh, from Tuesdays and Thursdays, 4 till 6, where kids can come along for free. They can get used to some fitness equipment. We teach them how to get by on stuff and stuff like that, especially when it comes to calisthenics as well. I run that downstairs. And then um, on the points of my classes, my classes are at the Lawrence Battle Theatre, half four, um, half four to half five for the youngers, being like eight till 12 and then from 13 and above. And that's half five until 6.30. What so, did? And that's on a Wednesday. That's a Wednesday, that. Um, there's going to be a few more of those classes going to be branching out because I've actually had a bit more inquiry about other other areas so I'm okay. trying to get that in other areas as well but at the minute I tried to get it there just so it's more central Okay. well Curtis it's been wonderful having you here with us today sharing your fascinating interesting and inspiring journey with our viewers and to you our audience we really want to thank you for being with us today and we look forward to having you with us again on our Innovate and Inspire Stories of Vision and Impact. So thank you and goodbye.